So viruses are just floating flash drives, y'all. That's that's all they are. So when they pull samples from you, um, they can't tell you whether or not, oh, this flash drive is going to kill you and every No, they just, they all they're saying is you're, they're positive that they found flash drives. Duh, you're made up of um, 100 trillion cells and and for every one of your 100 trillion cells, there's 10 bacteria. And every for one of every that bacteria, there's 10 viruses. Like, how much DNA do you really have, bro? You are a, a consolidated mass of a universe worth of information. You walking around with one individual information placed in a goddamn galaxy with no life can can impregnate that galaxy with all types of of life and info now it would definitely be a lot easier it being a man and a woman than just a man or a woman by themselves you know what i'm saying I, they could figure a way horizontal genes or something you know what i mean but man and a woman together and all that bacteria and virus and fungi and stuff y'all got man y'all could make some things pop you know so um, let's go through this. Let me see. Yeah, these are all the charts. You know, this is demographic comorbidities, uh, vitamin D levels of COVID-19 patients. Their levels stratified by sex, radiological COVID-19 disease stage. So they got the sex, you know, um, um, as well as the gender. Um, and if you look, they got all the numbers here. They even show you all the different stages. All right. And so I got it up because y'all could pull this paper up. This is a paper that is available to download, you know, so screenshot it, write the title down, look at the authors, you know what I'm saying? And then y'all could look it up and download it and, and look it over. Yeah, you might not be um, um, able to understand this jargon at first glance, but take your time and read it. Like you learn how to read anything else, you know, and this is from... Um, Appreciate all y'all rocking with me. I got some more slides coming up. But um, yeah, this is from the American Journal of Clinical Pathology. That's what the AJCP, American Journal of Clinical Pathology. All right. So this ain't just some rinky dink site. You know what I mean? All right. Levels of vitamin D in male and female patients, not rats. With coronavirus disease 2019 group by radiological COVID-19 disease stage. So these are scans, you know. Um, just so you know, these are sliced um scans uh from a bird's eye view. Imagine you're looking down at somebody's head and you cut them in half. Imagine you play in Mortal Kombat and they like finish him, you know what I'm saying? They slice the cat and the top half of his body just falls off, and this top is like there and all the blood spurting out right? That's what you're looking at right now. Top view of the half of the torso. On the bottom of the screen right here, you see this little white shape, you know, where it's it's an oval and it's two little things underneath it. That's your spine, okay? So the big part that's protruding, that's protruding into you, and then the back is your back, and then what you see is your two lungs, you know, on both sides. That's what you're seeing right there with the heart in the center. All right. Now, um, if you notice under the words, it says representative images of radiological stages of COVID-19 lung disease with predominantly ground glass opacities in early stage. Ground glass is a term that they use based on the inflammation that they pick up from these scans where it looks like broken glass shards um in your lungs all right so that's what the gra ground glass is showing the information crazy patterns in progressive stage two and consolidation in peak stage all right
But yeah, lastly, in conclusion, our study shows an association between vitamin D deficiency on admission and mortality of COVID-19 pneumonia, independent of vitamin D impacted comorbidities such as chronic lung disease, coronary artery disease, and diabetes. It highlights the needs for RCTs targeting specific, uh, specifically vitamin D deficient patients at intake and makes a call for general avoidance of vitamin D deficiency as a safe and inexpensive possible mitigation of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. Should I say that again? Should we say that one more time? One more again. It highlights the need for, let's just say, medical people, medical folks, healthcare workers, whatever, cats that are responsible for this shit, okay? Targeting specifically vitamin D deficient patients at intake and makes a call for general avoidance of vitamin D deficiency as a safe and inexpensive possible mitigation of the SARS COVID-2 <laughs> pandemic. Okay, you happy? I said it, all right. Y'all want me to say it. Y'all be wanting me to say it. But yeah, man. But uh oh, let me just put um RCTs technically is random uh random control trials, you know. So when you're talking about doing different type of uh studies and things like that, you got different ways you can do these studies, and this is uh referring to random control trial trials. So they did this particular study in this experiment and Usually when they do these papers is done so others can replicate and get the same findings, you know, so that's what they're instructing other people to do, you know, get your vitamin D up, baby. Now, I'm not just listen. Yes, I got me my Sotriol D, of course. Yes, this is this is what we got for y'all right here. Boom, bow, 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 but. That's secondary to the sun. Y'all know I've been telling y'all to get the sun. I'll be acting brand new with me. Like I'm just trying to hustle some. No, I will never tell you to replace the sun. Never, ever, ever. Why would I do something like that? It's right outside your door. You know what I'm saying? Man, Biden ain't about to force nothing. That man ain't about to be no president, bro. You ain't been paying attention to what's going on. Do you see what just happened in Philadelphia, bro? That man ain't nothing. If y'all are listening to the news, shame on you. Shame on you. You know what I mean? Obama ended up passing a law that allowed the news to lie and really get on some yellow journalism crap, bro. Like, they they fronting hard. They front hard. They front so hard right now. They about to, this decade ain't about to force nothing. Nothing. You hear what I'm saying? Vaccines are going to be for people who want vaccines. If that's what you want to be on, you know what I'm saying? But that's why you want to make sure you good. If you have to get tested for some odd reason and you straight, then you straight. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's just like that. But yeah, um, but yeah, that that that's dope, man. I'm gonna say this thing one more time, okay? So y'all could really hear the the power of this paper. And this is in Belgium. This is over there in Belgium, bro. You know what I mean? And this just dropped. The let me see the date of this paper. Where's the date? They usually have the um the date on here. It says 2020, obviously, but I know it was released like four days ago, but just because it was available for you to download four days ago, 
it could be a little bit older than that, but I'm not seeing the date, but I'll find out another time. But once again, once again, in conclusion, our study shows an association between vitamin D deficiency on admission and mortality of COVID-19 pneumonia, independent of vitamin D impacted comorbidities such as chronic lung disease, coronary artery disease, and diabetes. It highlight ah, and that's just to show like, look look at how they slid that in because when we talking about deaths that are taking place and they're saying oh that is COVID-19 is responsible but no it really be diabetes coronary uh artery disease and chronic lung diseases inflammatory auto-inflammatory diseases that they're just saying is COVID-19 it's called neglect. It's called medical neglect. It's called it's called personal neglect. And then you go to put your neglect on somebody else, and they like, bro, I'm about to help you. You know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I'll take you in because I'm about to get some insurance money, and you know what I mean. I, I'll get paid getting these ventilators and stuff like that. But hey, bro, that's on you. You know, um, it highlights the need for random control trials targeting specifically vitamin D deficient patients at intake. And, make, and makes a call for general avoidance of vitamin D deficiency as a safe and inexpensive. Come on, man. Listen to that. Look to the words they use, man. Safe and inexpensive possible mitigation of the SARS pandemic. Tough, man. Tough. Tough. Yeah, December 14th is the electoral date in which they're going to pick, you know, all of those uh, Republicans and they're going to all vote Trump, man. And they're going to lose Pennsylvania. One second, y'all. My bad, my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yes, mushrooms are high in vitamin D, and you can increase the, the vitamin D in mushrooms by taking the mushroom, the gill, which is on the opposite side of the cap, make sure that part is facing up, put it in the sun for, 40, for 48 hours, well, not 48 hours, two days, 12 hours um, a piece each day, you know? And that will increase the vitamin D by like a factor of a thousand or something. They'll, they'll go from 4,800 IUs to 48,000 IUs. It's ridiculous. Yep, that's right. L ergothionine. That's the other side of glutathione. Glutathione is sulfur base, while ergothionine is selenium um, um, base. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's that. Let me stop sharing this screen. Um, ba 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 ba. Let's do a new because I want to put up this one now. Let's do no. Okay, Wuhan Mamba. All right. Boom. How y'all doing though? All right. 
Yeah, the the ten, the yeah, um, vitamin D. You can you can download an app. I'm about to put this app up real quick. I I don't get no kickback from this by now. They should definitely be paying me. All the people I don't got to download this joint. All right, so this is an app that you can download on your phone, bro, and it will track your vitamin D levels. You know, you put your info in, your height, your weight, you know, type of foods you eat if you're taking supplements, things like that, um, and it'll tell you day by day how much vitamin D you have and if it's enough, if you're getting, if you're hitting your levels, and it has a, a, a real-time um, counter that you can take outside with you now, of course, it's a phone. And I, you know how I am about phones. So you don't have to have it right next to you, nothing. You know what I'm saying? You go, you start the thing, right? You can, you can leave the phone inside. You just start it then. You go outside. Let's say you're going to be outside for an hour in the sun, right? And it'll, it'll it's time it will go. And then when you come back in after 45 minutes or an hour and it ends, it'll tell you how much you got. You know, so it's it's a dope app. And then it has a Google map built in so you can tell them, you know, if you live in South Dakota, if you live in Chicago, if you live in uh, uh, Iowa, you know what I mean? If you in the UK, shoot, you might be in uh, South Africa. It, it don't matter. You can put it in there. It's going to have a forecast on there, just like it do with the weather. But it's going to be a UV index an ultraviolet index is going to tell you whether it's UVB light or it's UVA light, it's going to tell you the intensity, it's going to tell you what time of the day it starts, what time of the day it ends, where solar noon is, meaning when it's its most potent. I'm trying to tell you, it's, it's dope. I use it all the time and I, and I suggest it to a lot of people. Oh, KT the Arch Degree is the Patreon. Um, it's just my name. That's it. Just go to Patreon, type in KT the Arch Degree, and and become a member. You know, um, and that's how you get in there. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So on the screen, what you see is an interesting side note to this discussion is that sunlight is an assassin. Yes. It's a cold-blooded killer. You understand what? I, well, no, it's it's actually a hot-blooded killer. No. <laughs> so the same way you got a sniper. You know what I'm saying? About like like a mile away up in the cathedral in the cut. You know what I mean? Looking through the scope. That's how the sun is to a virus. Like, bah. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. The glowing globe in the sky is a warm hearted killer. The Department of Homeland Security. All right. Y'all know who that is. And technology, science and technology published on April 13th, 2020, a document outlining recommendations for efforts against COVID-19. One of the weaknesses they have identified of this virus is seen in the images below clipped from the report. Results. Virus lives longer at low humidity. Hmm. The tropics are not known for low humidity. They're known for high humidity. Hmm. So this is why I would talk about um, the old school bowl treatment. You get a bowl with the piping hot water and you put the uh, essential oils in there, towel over the head, over the water and inhale them fumes. What is that? Is that not humidity? Come on now. I talk about getting the little humidifier and putting the essential. I've been said that. That was before all this. And inactivates faster at higher humidity. Virus lives longer at low temperatures and inactivates faster as temperature increases. Notice they're not using the terminology of um, killing the virus because there ain't no such thing as killing the virus because it, it ain't alive and it ain't dead, but you can activate it or deactivate it. Um, and then the last one, come on, sunlight destroys the virus quickly. Findings. Virus is most stable in cool, dry conditions. Virus decays fast in high humidity and temperature much faster in sunlight. 
Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. All right, so let's uh this is now now this is this is information that I put out um this is information that I put out um January and February, bro. And it's it's about to be December. Um <laughs> talk about what about solar flares? <laughs> I mean, you know, what you would I don't know what you mean by that. Like, is it gonna it just gonna burn you or something like that if you out there when it happens? I don't know. Um Oh, yeah, I know about the contaminated. We ain't even talking about tests yet. We just talk. Listen, I'm just talking about coronavirus, COVID. Like, we just sticking to that right now. We ain't even getting into the test type thing because a PCR test is not designed to tell you whether or not you're infected by a thing. That's not what it's for. Okay. It's, 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 it amplifies genetic material that's pre existing inside of you. It could be contaminated and already have stuff too, but it's all about amplification. <clears throat> if I clean this counter right now and I'm scrubbing and everything like that, and I put a camera on it and show y'all, y'all be like, oh man, it's clean. But then if I get a microscope and I start or take a picture rather, <clears throat> a high definition shot, put it on my, my screen and then start zooming in and zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. Eventually you're gonna start seeing some dirt and some other stuff the more I zoom. So it's not that there's any dirt there at the time when I'm cleaning it, but the more you look, the more you make things, things big, it's gonna start looking dirty and looking real strange. You know what I mean? So. The, the PCR test, we'll get to that. But right now, let's 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 talk about um like what what happens, you know what I mean? Because you gotta know what things happen in stages, you know. Um, think think about sex because when you say the word sex, everybody starts listening. Sex, booty, you know what I mean? People start listening when you say things like that, right? <laughs> so so to get your attention. So think about it. And I'm going to talk to the brothers because I'm a guy. I don't know what women go through. I know what I go through. Now, when you're interested, when you're interested, when you're interested in, in making love to a woman, copulating, getting it on, smashing, whatever terminology you use, okay? Um, and you, you, have, you have a woman that you're interested in, right? You're not just going to grab her by her head, smack her head into the wall, and then start having sex with her. You're not going to do that. No. Sex is in stages, right? More than likely, you're going to, and this is already, y'all have established some type of rapport together, right? Y'all know each other to a degree. You're going to take her out. You're going to show her a good time. You're going to go back to one of y'all place. You're going to rub her feet. You're going to massage her or something. You're going to set the mood, right? And then even after clothes come off, there's still more stages that lead to satisfaction, that leads to um, um, satiation, gratification, okay? That leads to those things. You never just get there, okay? So with <laughs> doing the dirty, though, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So you have to take your time. Now, men, yes, we can listen. We 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 could just run and just jump right up in the ocean and start swimming. We ain't sticking our toe in there to see, you know, how cold it is. You know what I mean? But it's not just us in the act. We're, it's tango. It's two people involved. So because of that, we have to take into account what the other person wants as well. And what a woman wants is a woman's like a furnace. You you light you light a furnace, it's a process just lighting the furnace, right? Then after you light it, is it hot immediately? Is the is the house sweltering all of a sudden? No, it's not. It has to heat up all that space. 
and get and then and then you have to manipulate the flame in a way so that it's not too hot and then it's not cold. You know, you want it nice and warm and you want it comfortable. And that's what a woman wants. A woman wants you to treat her like a furnace and get her just right. And when she's just right, she's gonna be just right for you. You know what I mean? So you can't rush her into that. You gotta stoke the fire. <laughs> Y'all <Yeah>, stupid. <laughs> Oh, man. See, the vegan kitty said I better preach. So, I mean, who better than someone called the vegan kitty? I'm just <laughs> y'all got some wild names, man. But nah, man, Um, just to give you all an idea. So with the virus, it's the same thing. It's like if it's a situation where you're creating it inside of you, that means you're in an environment that's very toxic and you have not left that environment after some time. So the body is 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 sending you alarms that you're ignoring. So it's like, OK, uh, we're, we're at level red now. Um, meow, 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 meow. SOS. So then it starts um, using the vir the virome in order to create these bodies to start to create these reactions in you where you notice and you like what's going on with me. And that makes you stop. Now you can't go to work. Now you can't get it on with your girl. Now you can't do all these things that would normally be distracting you. And now you have to focus within and get yourself right. And then you find out, damn, this environment's mad toxic. I need to remove myself. And then it goes away. You can't get better in the same environment you got sick in. You know what I'm saying? So um, if it's coming from um, um, from other sources, you know, the person is 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 emitting things and then you inhale it. It has to settle in you and then it has to cause a reaction in the nose or the mouth. That means the skin didn't work. Your mucous membrane didn't work. The mouth, the nose wasn't able to hold it off. Then it has to go down the throat. Right. Then it has to go into the lungs and then it has to get to the alveoli and then it has to get it, you know. That yo for a virus, do you know how much work that is? A virus isn't as big as me. A virus is a nanometer. A virus is in nanometers. It is so so small, bro. Like you could fit thousands of cells on the tip of a a needle. And that's a cell. A virus don't got nothing a, a cell is like planet Earth and a virus is like an escape pod from a spaceship approaching Earth. Can you visualize that? So imagine an escape pod that's coming into Earth and think of all the places on Earth that this escape pod can land. And remember, I'm saying that Earth is a cell not the body, not the whole respiratory system. That means that the respiratory system is made up of Earths. <laughs> so an escape pod having to go through all those Earths. Jesus. I hope y'all telling people that this is on right now. You know what I'm saying? This is real information. I ain't playing. I got the slides out today. When y'all see me whipping slides out? Come on now. All right. So um, let's go to. Uh, OK, so ACE2 receptor. All right. So a receptor is just like what it sounds. Um, the catcher in baseball is a receptor, is he not? What is his job? To receive the baseball that's coming his way. A satellite dish that you use in order to watch television is a receptor. They might call it a receiver. All right. And what does it do? It receives signals that then are converted through wires to your television screen and the apparatus of your television screen reconfigures that information into a digital optical image that your eyes could pick up and then you can see what's going on on the television okay so that that's what a receptor is a receptor is designed to receive a thing okay a hand uh, all right <laughs> 
I don't even know what y'all talking about right now. Yeah, it is a fair. Are y'all still talking about the furnace? Yeah, I know if I do a sex talk uh uh video with y'all, boy, y'all going y'all gonna go crazy. I already know that's gonna be the one everybody gonna gonna watch. Not the one about the COVID-19, but the one about the booty. That's gonna be what it is. All right, so there's a receptor for um the ACE. Uh, which is angiotensin converting enzyme, but two, okay? So angiotensin two is upregulated by angiotensin converting enzyme and drives severe lung failure through the AT1A receptor. So anytime you hear any of these letters, AT1, AT2, don't worry about that. Just think about the receptor part. All right. And and remember, receptive satellite dish. So when I say um, failure through the satellite dish, on the other hand, ACE2 and the AT2 satellite dish protect against lung injury. OK. AIM2 binds with the AT1 satellite dish, activating multiple pathways or activating multiple wires. Right. Inflammation, oxidative stress, endothelial dysfunction, tissue remodeling, thrombosis, proliferation, fibrosis, increased blood pressure. All right. All of these things happen based on this particular receptor getting activated. So the virus has to get there. Now, ACE2 receptors exist not just in the lungs. They exist throughout the respiratory system and other areas throughout the body. Now, when you would hear things about problems with the men's testicles and things with people's sight and other weird stuff that went on based on COVID, well, that's because there's receptors in all these areas. And when it binds with that, when, when the satellite dish receives this signal from this COVID, it's going to do different things in different areas, you know? Can I get some thumbs up? Is that all right? Can I ask for some thumbs up? Is that cool? Is is that cool with y'all? Can I can I can I kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of all right? Hit hit some thumbs if y'all feeling the info so far. All right. Um nitric oxide production is inhibited, all right? Cuz what does what does nitric oxide do? All right? This is back to the sex talk, all right? Cuz Viagra is about doing what? Dilation of the vessels to allow more blood flow. You got all this blood flowing through your body. And if a man can control the flow of blood to his phallus, then he will keep a, an erection. He will actually increase the size, the length and the girth of his phallus too, because his, his phallus will have to develop a way to be able to hold all of this flow that's coming through there. But if the flow decreases, then there's no reason to have so many channels and spongy material to hold, you know, not enough blood flow. So it will get smaller because it's not necessary. OK, so nitric oxide is known for vasodilation. We get this in the morning from the red and blue light that comes from the AM sun. That's why I said catch sunrise, because that's going to cause the dermal pooling. Dermal pooling. Pooling, you know what pooling is. Pooling is a collection of water. Dermal means skin. So the nitric oxide causes the vessels to, to open up so more blood flows and it pools near the surface of the skin where you have nothing but more satellite dishes. In this time, and in, in this case, they're called red blood cells. If you look at a red blood cell, a red blood cell is a satellite dish. Let come back. Let me see. I know I got a, a dope picture of the blood in here somewhere. You tell me I don't got no red blood cell pictures on this. Okay, here we go. There you go. Boom. All right. So don't worry about the, the info on there. Just look at the shape of the red blood cell. They're biconcave. Con a concave lens is a lens that bows inward. So it bows inward on both sides. It's a torus shape, a donut, okay? And that's a satellite dish. That's for radio signals, all right? So the dermal pooling allows blood to come to the surface so you can pick up more of those frequencies, all right?
No, I haven't discussed the elderberries and the virus yet. No, we have not spoken on elderberry. <laughs> y'all going in. Y'all got all the answers. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, all that herb stuff is nice. Don't get me wrong, but ain't nothing trumping the sun and vitamin D. I'm sorry. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. Why you think when you go to the Caribbean, folks be eating crazy? They eat crazy. They can eat crazy and get away with it because they get in the ocean every day. They walk on the beach. They catch in the sunrise. Hmm. Chlorophyll is normal. Even the cats that's eating pig booty down there, they still drink chlorophyll for some reason. <laughs> I'm saying so. Folks get away with a lot in the tropical regions because they're getting such a, a, a um, strong and long period of ultraviolet B light. And that that just allows your body to kind of deal with a lot more trash than normal. But when you're dealing with a trashy environment and you eat in trash, then you know trash plus trash equal trash. Stay more trash, right? All right. So <clears throat> let's talk about this Ra system real quick. All right. It's called a renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Renin from the kidney and angiotensin from the liver produces angiotensin one. This interacts with angiotensin converting enzyme produced in the lungs, which, which is cleaved and produces angiotensin 2. This binds with the angiotensin 2 uh, converted enzyme 2 receptor. ACE2 functions as a carboxypeptidase. Okay, anytime you see ashe at the end of a word, okay, that means it's an enzyme because ashe means so shall it be. It means to get things done. And that's what enzymes are, things that they're catalysts. They, they serve the same function. I just find it quite ironic that I say is at the end. Cleaving a single residue from angiotensin 1, generating angiotensin 1 through 9, and a single residue from angiotensin 2 to generate angiotensin 1 through 7. The ACE2 homologue, ACE by contrast, cleaves the decapeptide, deca meaning 10, meaning 10 peptides, right? It's just a polymer of peptides. Angiotensin 1 into the octapeptide, angiotensin 2. So something got cleaved, 2 got knocked off. Was 10 minus 8, 2, right? Octa means 8. Thus, ACE2 counterbalances the function of ACE and negatively regulates AIM2 production. Ours COVID V spike can exaggerate acute lung failure through deregulation of the renin angiotensin system. Moreover, SARS COVID V spike mediated lung failure can be rescued by the inhibition of the AT1 receptor. All right. So, what I just say. So, this is the picture to go along with what I was just saying. Liver produces angiotensinogen. Kidney produces renin, okay? All of these are happening based upon your sodium levels. Now, Caucasians don't retain as much sodium as black folks do. And if you notice, our foods are completely different. <laughs> if you eat food, the average food that a Caucasian make don't got enough seasoning up in there. When we say seasoning, shoot, eat just salt. You know what I mean? We some salty cats. You know what I mean? And salt plays a huge role in our melanin as well. So <clears throat> the kidney makes the renin, the liver makes the angiotensin, and that's angiotensin, uh, angiotensin 1. The lung produces ACE. And between angiotensin 1 and ACE, now angiotensin 2 is made. Once angiotensin 2 is made, it increases sympathetic activity. It increases um, the tubular sodium uh, chloride reabsorption um, in the kidneys and potassium excretion and water retention. Okay, water retention, because water is going to follow where the salt go, right? Um, adrenal gland cortex, aldosterone secretion is going to increase arterial vasoconstriction meaning blood pressure is going to increase um and then and this this is why the blood pressure medication for black folks is bad because 
they they have us taking blood pressure meds to lower our blood pressure where our blood pressure ain't really high it's just that we have a different pressure because we black because we retain salt it's different so really we we taking blood pressure medications and that's actually messing this system up it's destroying this 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 uh ross system you know all right so let me go down to this chart right here let's see y'all with me we gotta have flavor yeah carbon c60 you just gotta get some shungite baby you just gotta get some shungite baby because uh or or let me say noble shungite so to speak because noble shung shungite have a higher um concentration of c60 um inside And I want to be like you. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. All right. So let me get back to it. All right. So let's look at this chart right here. Okay. This, this, is, a, this is a game changer right here. Okay. Once again, this is information from almost a year ago at this point. But it's, it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Um, uno momento. Um, okay, so if you look at the top, it says ace two ace, ace two ace, all right, and then it has kind of a flow chart, and then it got these other lines. So, ace two, right, can become ang uh angiotensin one through seven which then can become angiotensin one through five okay angiotensin one can become angiotensin two and also can become angiotensin one through nine i'm gonna say that again angiotensin one can become angiotensin one through nine angiotensin two can become angiotensin one through seven angiotensin one through seven can become angiotensin one through five why is this necessary because from there, um, the pan the pancreas islets, and what what do I mean? What does it mean by the pancreas islets? The pancreas has something called the islets of Langerhans, because Langerhans is the cat that you know found them. So you know, if your name if your name is is Junebug, then it'd be the islets of Junebug. If you Nene, then it's the islets of Nene. You see what I'm saying? Like you could just rename it if you want to, because they're yours. Like it's the islets of arch degree. You know what I'm saying? That's what mine's are called. <laughs> so um this is where glucagon, um, um, somatostatin and um insulin is created. The beta cells create insulin, the alpha cells create glucagon, the delta cells create somatostatin. Um, we all know that insulin deals with blood sugar. Insulin is a signal that sends its signal to the receptor sites on the surface of the cells to do what? What's the signal? The signal is a telegram, an email, a smoke signal, whatever you want to call it. And what does it say? There's sugar in the blood, baby. There's glucose all around here. Let it in, man. Let it in. And when the receptor is broken or covered in mucus, the satellite dish to receive that signal that's diabetes too. When the islets of Langerhans are suffering from autoimmunity and getting destroyed and eaten and shrinking in number, meaning that the strength of the signal becomes very weak, where now when you try to listen to the signal, it'd be like, oh, I don't know what I just said. You know what I just said? I don't think anybody know what I just said. Neither does the satellite dish. So it ain't about the oh, be like, oh, hell nah. Somebody knock on your door and you say, who is it? And they be like, I, 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 I. are you going to let them in? <laughs> so so the receptor, when the problem is at the, the, the receiving end, that's diabetes 2. When it's at the source end, is diabetes 1. It's real simple, ain't it? So um, 
what it says here is effects of angiotensin two uh, reactive oxygen species generation increase increase of inflammation decrease of blood flow increase of apoptosis decrease of islet cell proliferation um, uh, effects of angiotensin one through seven reactive oxygen species generation decrease in inflammation increase in blood flow decrease in apoptosis increase in islet cell pl proliferation in the kidney. Um, you can see what the problems are there. Glomerular filtration rate is the rate at which your kidney filters your blood. It separates the blood from the plasma. And, and then as it's going through all the tubules, the plumbing, the nephrons of the, of the kidneys, it reabsorbs what it don't need and it let go with whatever it does need. And the ironic thing about the kidney is the kidney, the proximal tubules right, out cell, right outside of the Bowman's capsule is the location where vitamin D3 is made because it has to go through different processes in your body to become a full-fledged vitamin D3. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. All right. So let me go to this other chart. This is another one. This one is a little bit better. That's right. All mucus results in sickness like Dr. Sabi would say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Approximately 1 million cells in the islets of Langerhans. Not if you got an autoimmune disease, it ain't no million. You might have a cool 100,000. You know what I'm saying? A cool 100,000 up in there. All right, let me get some more likes, y'all. Any more likes? Any more likes? Any more likes? All right, so ACE2, all right, can make angiotensin 1 through 7, all right? So um, when you see an arrow, that means that um, that process is moving forward while the blue with the perpendicular line means that that process is being inhibited. So angiotensin II can lead to pressure overload and hypertension um, post my myocardial infarction, which is just another way of saying heart attack, remodeling, um, diabetes, one in diabetes type two, right? So if you already got diabetes, then what's going to happen to you is just going to progress diabetes, right? Um, as well as obesity. All right. But that's the angiotensin, um, the ANG2, but the ACE2, which can become ANG1 through 7, right? They do the exact opposite. They inhibit all of these things, all right? And angiotensin 1 through 7 inhibits heart failure while this angiotensin 2 um, actually uh, promotes heart failure <laughs> or leads to heart failure or results in heart failure. I'm about to, I am about to refill. I don't know. I'm, you know, cause man, you know, when you hear someone speaking like this constantly at a slow pace with no interest into what they're speaking about, more than likely people will lose interest in the content because attention spans are shot in this day and age. Do you see? So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I keep it entertaining. Does this correlate to congestive heart failure? I just said post MI remodeling myocardial infarction. What does it say on the screen? Look in the big red box on the bottom. Heart failure, heart failure, heart failure. I tell you, heart failure, <laughs> heart failure. All right, so remember you got angiotensin one and you got angiotensin two. Angiotensin one generating angiotensin one through nine. All right. And angiotensin two generates one through seven. So on this chart, angiotensin two has the ability to become um, angiotensin converting en enzyme two, or, or rather, angiotensin converting enzyme two can convert angiotensin two to angiotensin one through seven. And when that happens, then you can um, produce all of these particular things. 
You know what I'm saying? Or, or rather inhibit all of these particular things. But angiotensin two, on the other hand, is what leads to all these things. The cardiac hypertrophy, hyper meaning, um, you know, the, the, the swelling of the heart and everything. Di dilated cardiomyopathy, cardiac fibrosis, PKC activation, MAPK activation, ROS production. All of those are increased. Cell death, MMP activation, you know, all of these lipotoxicity, endothelial dysfunction, you know, endo Adipo, adiponectin decrease, myocardial lipotoxicity, all of these problems. Look, you want to know why people are dying of complications? Look at all these goddamn complications. And if you already have complications in parts of your body, if you get in a fight, like, like Roy Jones and Tyson was fighting last night, right? And, and Tyson see Roy limping. Well, yeah, he going, he going, he going, he going to go for the weakness. If if Roy Jones see, you know what I'm saying, that they're on the side, the way the Tyson is kind of moving a little bit, he know, oh man, I'm about to go for his ribs. You know what I'm saying? Like you going to go for the weakest to drop somebody. So that's the same thing that's going to happen in your body. You can't see the bottom of the slide. What you mean? Oh, you can't see the bottom of the slide. No wonder, because I got this damn deminder on. Hold on. My bad, y'all. Um, there we go. Boom. My bad. There he is. There he is. That's why you couldn't see it, brother. I'm snapping on you and everything, and you can't even see it. See how KT is? Uh, that's terrible. All right, so look at this slide right here so you can understand what's going on, okay? And remember, the coronavirus spike protein connects to the ACE2, all right? Let's look at the anatomy of this particular virus, all right? The virus is made up of a envelope, all right? A protein envelope, which is just like the envelope you use to do what? Why do they call it an envelope, you think? Why do you think they call this they call it an envelope? What does what do envelopes hold? I'm gonna look in the chat. Okay. What do you find inside of an envelope? <laughs> Not don't know, don't know, nigga. <laughs> Yo, wow, man. Uh, she said mail. That was you find in the envelope. There we go. A letter. A letter is what I'm looking for. <laughs> Y'all, wow. All right. So, yes, you open up an envelope. The average thing you're going to find in the envelope is a letter. What does the letter consist of? It's a message, it's information. All right. That's why they call RNA that they use to transcribe proteins in your body to make harm uh, uh, proteins and things like that. They call that messenger RNA. So what is hiding in this envelope? Huh? Don't it say RNA? Hmm. RNA is the message. It's the letter. That's why they call it envelope. And then on the surface, they have these spike proteins. These spike proteins are like little fingers and little little keys, so to speak, that are, that are just out there looking, searching. And then when it finds the satellite dish, it finds the receptor site. This this satellite dish is a little different. It's a little different than just being a um, um something that receives a signal um for like a television. In this case, it's, it's looking for a signal so that it can open up. So it connects to the satellite dish, it sends a signal there. And then what happens is the, the uh, membrane of your cell folds into itself and allows the coronavirus to come in there. The, 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 the membrane or the envelope of the virus actually gets brought right inside of the cell. You let it in because it knows the secret password. You know, little guy opens up a little sliding door. Zoop. What you want, cat? What you want? Oh man, I know the password. Huh? What is it then? Oh, yeah, H2. Uh spike protein. And they let them in. You know what I'm saying? They let them in the club and then they start the party. All right. So 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 let's see, let's see. 
So this is what's going on at the time. Now, if you read much about COVID-19 and similar viruses, you have no doubt seen the phrase cytokine storm. It is one of the major complications of this virus. This is essentially an over-the-top response by the immune system. How did that ad for Pringles potato chips go back in the day? Once you pop, you can't stop. Picture that when thinking of a cytokine storm. A cytokine is an important part of our immune response, serving a vital function. But too many cytokines contribute to an unbalanced and ineffective response. Interestingly enough, the same study reviewing the 1918-1919 influenza pandemic, vitamin D was suspected of playing a role in modulating production of the cytokines. So not only does vitamin D fuel the immune system, but it prevents the whole cytokine storm from taking place. So cytokines are messengers, they're local messengers, they're, they're in certain regions and they can get so strong and they can get so buck wild that it just starts tearing the club up everywhere. They start th throwing chairs and lifting tape, flipping tables and throwing bows and busting shots, all that stuff start going on in there. And my thing is, Innocent bystanders, folks going to get caught in the crossfire that had nothing to do with nothing. And at the end of the day, there's way more damage done than good. So that's what the cytokine storms are. So you want to make sure that that does not happen. All right, all right. Vitamin D3, man. Vitamin D3. The sun is the best source, but I got that social D for you right here. D3, 5,000 IUs a day for you and your peoples. You know what I'm saying? That what I got right there for you. You know what I mean? You go to soyanicbotanicals.com. That's where you got to go to the site. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep flowing. All right, so remember, like I said, it's stages. It's like I was talking about the woman being like a furnace and everything. So it got to get in the cell. That's that's kind of the commonality of everything that you're going to hear about this virus is that no matter what's going on, it has to get inside. Do you understand? It has to get in first, just like mind state, right? You're not defeated unless you're mentally defeated. As long as you don't stay mentally, as long as you stay mentally strong and you're not mentally defeated, you are in the game. It's not over. But once that mind get compromised, oh, it's a wrap, bro. So it's the same thing with the virus. So you got um, EVNCs, enveloped virus neutralizing compounds. Now, coronavirus is a enveloped virus, but we have neutralizing compounds that do what? They bind. Right. There's lipids that bind to the to the proteins. Right. Uh, sugar binding, rafting and fusion inhibition, things that stop the fusion of the virus and the actual membrane of your cell from connecting. So th these are things that you want to do. So when you start talking about um, uh, when I start talking about the um, the secondary plant metabolites, uh, such as flavonoids, that's the role that the flavonoids play. You know, um, I'm going to go to, yeah, there's some other information I got here on the side. Yeah. So this is a better image of the coronavirus right there. Spike proteins are the blue and the green elements that you see while the envelope is the red. So those blue and green mechanisms, they want to connect with the AC2 receptor, all right, in order to get inside the cell. And you, you don't even want to think about what to do when it's in the cell. You want to think about what to do to prevent it from getting in. And even if it's a situation where you're making them in your body, yeah, a cell starts making them and producing them. It starts getting transferred, but it has to get into another cell to keep replicating because what makes a virus um, not classified as being alive is it doesn't have the ability to replicate on its own, okay? So if anything, 
viruses are might might be more of a gender thing. You know what I mean? I've always said viruses are males and bacteria is a females because what a virus does is virus rolls up on bacteria and it um, penetrates the bacteria, ejaculates its DNA into the bacteria in which now the bacteria uses its machinery in order to reproduce the contents that the virus ejaculated in it. And then it it swells up and all of a sudden all these little babies pop out. It's called lysogeny and lysis, all right? I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got some, I got some hate up in. I wouldn't even know. I'm too busy talking. I'm too busy talking, man. I'm too busy talking. Yeah, elderberry is horrible to take down a cytokine storm, but but remember, that's only gonna happen when you're dealing with vitamin D deficiency, and that's how they scare you away from the elderberry. So all that's saying is that it's not just as simple as um, hold on one second. <laughs> I need to plug this up. Hold on. As long as you're getting the sun, as long as you're getting the 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 necessary vitamin D levels, that's going to neutralize those cytokine storms. You see what I'm saying? So the elderberry's not going to add to it because it ain't going to be nothing to add to. You know, so. You know, and that's also why tonics come into effect because tonics represent um, being able to take different qualities from different plants and put them together so that if you take this on its own, this didn't actually happen. But if you add this to it, that ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? And it's going to reinforce this and make this happen, which is a good thing. You know, so that's why you make a compound. You know, uh, G6PD deficiency. Yep, that's that's the boy. I talked about that. That was back in March, April. I talked about that a big deal, especially for those trying to take hydroxychloroquine. If you got G6PD deficiency, and you taking hydroxychloroquine, you're going to suffer from hemolytic anemia, meaning your blood cells are going to bust and you're going to have an iron issue, iron deficiency and drop uh, exponentially. But people that uh, a lot of this COVID-19 talk is really G6PD deficiency as well. So y'all need to look that one up. I got slides on that as well, though. You already know. Oh, yeah. Mycoplasma. We ain't going to get into mycoplasma right now. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. This is the hydroxychloroquine stuff. That's a whole that's a whole lecture in itself. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. All right. So dietary polyphenols display zinc ionospore activity. Um, boom. Let me put this up. So when you do hear about hydroxychloroquine, the whole science behind. Oh, green leafy vegetables, my marine phytoplankton you can find on my site. You know what I'm saying? Mama pills. Iron tonic is the best oxyhemo on her site. Um, but you know, green leafy vegetables are just trying to get some. Burdock, yellow dock is the best herbs that are accessible in temperate regions. They grow the, the yellow dock grows north and south, but the burdock you're gonna find more in the northern climates, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 true. Yeah, of course you could take Fido. A lot of my products you could take together. I wouldn't say like mix them all in one cup, but like throughout the day, you definitely can take them. All right. So this is showing kind of how the hydroxychloroquine uh, situation works where um, zinc uh, zinc is used as a, um, a uh, ion, ionos, ionophore, ionophore, 
make sure I'm saying that right. <laughs> Ionophore is the right word. So, you know, the name of my company is So Ionic, you know, um, and, and Ionophore or Ionophore is a, uh, a doorway, so to speak, because the membrane is like the skin of a cell. And remember, we're talking about viruses getting into the cell. Well, when you take certain things in order to help get rid of the virus, like for instance, when it gets in the cell, um, you need to make sure that those properties can get in your cell too. But you, you know, they don't, they don't know that junk you taking. They like, you know, who are you? And you're gonna be like, you know, I'm boom, I'm boom boom's cousin, you know, uh, from St. Louis. Like boom boom's cousin. Boom boom never told me he had a cousin. What's your name? You know what I mean? Like, yo, my name Lil Zink, Lil Zink Zink. He was like. Let me holler at Boom Boom and see what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not just going to let anything up in there. You know what I mean? You got to prove yourself. And in this case, with an ionophore, ionophore is, is proven by way of your charge, the type of charge you got. So zinc has a certain type of charge. So the hydroxychloroquine gets combined with the zinc, and then it, it forms a complex in the membrane that then allows the the hydroxychloroquine to enter inside of the cell and then start doing what it has to do with the um with the virus but hydroxychloroquine is based on quinine okay quinine which is a natural uh um flavonoid or phenol that is found in the citrona bark in Peru. I mean, you can find that. I don't know if you can find it now because it's been so popular with everything going on. They they probably low and expensive as hell everywhere now, but um, it's a common herb. And um, the quinine is a isolated molecule from that plant. And it's called hydroxychloroquine because it's a chloride molecule on there. Uh, not molecule, uh, element. You know, the element chloride is on there. And then you have... Um, uh, a hydroxyl group on there too. So it's hydroxychloroquine. Well, you could take quercetin, you could take other polyphenols along with zinc and the same process that you're seeing here, as you see how the zinc ain't going in there on its own, but the zinc complex, you see how it says QCT, EGG, and, C, and CQ, um, uh, QCT is the quercetin. EG, CG represents um, that that uh, molecule in green tea that everybody goes crazy about. I, I forget how to say the whole joint off the top right here. But combine when you when you combine the flavonoid with the mineral, they create an ionophore zinc complex that then enters inside the cell. And the zinc, man, zinc is everything in the world to um, uh, fight viruses because it's hel it helps to, to create something called a zinc finger, all right? A zinc finger. Just like, what do you use your fingers for? You got hands, right? And your hands is able to grab things and do things, you know what I'm saying, right? It, 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 it allows you to, to do some real meticulous processes, but your fingers don't. Your fingers allow you to do even more specific, you know what I mean? You can do some real funky shit with your fingers, you know what I mean? So that's why they call them zinc fingers, because the zinc combines with, with amino acids and these little proteins and stuff and makes this, this, um, this structure, this molecular structure that's kind of like a finger. And what it's able to do is do some real specific tasks, and in this case, it's able to shut down these viruses. All right. This is like a blow up of the molecular. Each gray circle is a different amino acid. The ones, the amino acids that combine to the zinc are cysteine, which is the sulfur based amino acids, and histidine. All right. Those connect to them. And then they create these little, they look like little onks. You know what I'm saying? All right. So, um, zinc ions bind to the zinc fingers, right, which translocate to the nucleus and activates gene transcription, regulation of enzymatic activity. Zinc ions inhibit uh, PTPs and affect phosphorylation cascades, assembly of complexes. Two zinc dependent steps are essential for early activation, first upon contact with the MHC on an antigen pre presenting cell. So 
this breakdown right here is just talking about how integral they are in your immune system and in your immune response. Um, you need zinc in order for each step in your immune response to happen. And when you don't have any zinc, then it has to use another mineral or it doesn't use anything at all. So yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all different um, complexes, quercetin, quercetin iron complexes right here, you know, in, in order to get in the cell and do some work, you know. These are sources um, of a lot of the flavonoids right here, okay? So you got curcumin. And I got, okay, so let me address curcumin real quick because you got people that say, um, curcumin doesn't do anything. Um, the studies show it doesn't help. Um, it takes a long time in order for the effects of the curcumin, right? But that is not true. Um, it is true to an extent. It's true when you don't know what you're doing. Um, when you're dealing with solubility, you deal with different solutes, right? You deal with different solutions. So you got water, you got oil, you got ethanol, you know what I'm saying? You got fat, you know, you got, you got different things um, to use to dissolve substances and you have to use the right solution or else my, you, you won't be able to solve the problem without the right solution. I'm gonna say that again. You won't be able to solve the problem without the right solution. Okay, trademark KT2020 today. Okay. Which means curcumin is fat soluble. So who uses curcumin a lot? Indians, right? Indians utilize, they use like clarified butter, ghee, and stuff like that, but they also use oils, coconut oils, and things like that too. So what you want to do with curcumin or turmeric, so to speak, is when you cook your turmeric. When you when you use your turmeric, you want that thing to be warmed up in oil. You want to infuse it in some food you eating, right? Or like how they do the they do the golden milk. That's that's a fat, you know. Now I'm not talking about dairy milk. I'm talking about different nut milks and coconut milks, you know. And you can add like some get some of my perilla oil. Mix that thing with the turmeric. Put that thing inside of a milk or something and drink that. And what that's going to do is allow more bioavailability because they say it's the, the bioavailability of curcumin is very poor because nobody is thinking about its solubility factor. Okay. Yeah. So thymol, that's in thyme, juglone, that's in um, um, walnut, you know, Coumarin, you know, that's the blood thinner. You find that in a lot of different herbs. Eugenol, that's in clove. Um, vanillin, you know, these are all the different flavonoids. You find all this stuff in food. That's why I say was like, let, let, let the food, food be that medicine because it's really in the foods. When you eat strong, powerful foods, especially locally sourced in your area, you get a lot of this stuff. And herbs are not just limited to the the, the big uh, medicinal herbs. It's also spice herbs like thyme and oregano and rosemary and dill and basil and, you know, all of those, cilantro, all of them got, you smell them, right? You smell them and they smell so good and they bring back memories because they doing good stuff for you. You know, yep, yeah, pepper is good too. You want to use pepper and oil for turmeric. They they make it pop. They make it pop. That's why it's like when I hear people say these things, I'd be like, man, yeah, what Inky say you didn't stay in the studio long enough. And it's cool. That's why I'm here. I'm here to just kind of like <laughs> move it on out. Um, so anthocyanins, you know, such as uh, delphinidin, which you find in pomegranate, you know what I'm saying? And black grapes. You know, apples and apricots got floridin, you know, dihydroquercetin and Mexican oregano and acai berry. OK, this is the EGCG I was just showing you before. Ep epigalacto, no, epigallocatechin, epigallocatechin. 
<laughs> Gallate. Y'all didn't think I could trip up off words, huh? Uh, Naringenin, you find that in tomatoes. And, and that's another one. They say tomatoes, you can't get the um, lycopene out of tomatoes like that. The bioavailability is low because you got to use oil, bro. You got to use oil. Go in, cult go, go in cities with culture and look at how they use tomatoes, like Italians, right? No, I'm not pumping, you know, wheat and egg pasta and cheeses and stuff. But just think of the culture. What do they do with tomatoes? You know, they blanch them joints. They remove the skin off. Um, they take the seeds out. This is so you don't suffer from a lot of the problems that a nightshade um, sourced uh, vegetable fruit would afford you, you know. And then it's usually in some oil based sauce. You know what I'm saying? So you can look up their studies on the bioavailability of lycopene based upon um, oil based and based upon you just boiling it and steaming it and stuff. And it's two different things, man. All right. Let me keep it going. Should I keep going? Y'all done? Y'all tired? Y'all sleepy? Because I, I could wrap this up right now. We about to hit two hours, man. Am I finished? Am I done? Y'all let me know. See what the people got to say. Am I finito? Am I finito? Oh, yeah, this is dope. Okay, this is the guaco. Um, one second, y'all. Let's see what y'all saying. Keep going. Y'all sure? I don't know, man. I, I could stop right here. We could pump the brakes. We could pump them brakes. We could pump the brakes. We could pump those brakes. We could pump the brakes. We could pump them brakes. We could pump brakes. We could pump them brakes. We could pump brakes. Let's pump them brakes. Got to pump the brakes. We could pump them brakes. Got to pump the brakes. <laughs> what else you gotta add i know there's more yeah i can go for another two hours y'all have no idea y'all have no idea how hard in the paint i could go because i can go Let me get this over here. All right. All right, boom. A step. Okay. Bow. All right. So one, two, three, four, six. Penta galoil glucose. How you say all that? Um, another way of saying this word is just PGG. All right. So I'm gonna read first, and then I'm gonna show. Wow, uh, this is an excerpt from a paper. Our AFM experiments prove that PGG analogs cause virion aggregations by clumping influenza viral particles. Consequently, influenza viral entry is blocked. 
The mechanism of action is different from the many sialic acid containing agents that have been developed as HA inhibitors. Besides effectively preventing HA from binding to receptors, um, when I say HA, just think of the spike proteins, the same mechanisms that are used in order to get in the cell. PGG, which is that long word I just said before, analogs also induce the aggregation of viral particles. Simulations also suggest that the molecules with multiple galloyal substituents tend to exhibit stable binding interactions with the three conserved binding sites. And if y'all haven't noticed yet, I kind of transitioned into talking about herbs about 30 minutes ago. Even though I'm talking about all of these little molecules, these are the molecules that are found in herbs all right? and foods. Um, the binding forms a triangular region that stabilizes the ligand receptor complexes. Such stabilization explains a strong ligand receptor binding affinity. Each galloyal substituent in a PGG analog contributes to the binding affinity of PGG HA complexes. Increasing the number of galloyal substituents in a PGG analog will increase the PGG analog's inhibition of the flu virus. Okay, let's just say the herb molecule. When I say PGG, the herb molecule. When I say HA, think of the spike protein of the coronavirus that is used to get in the cell. Okay, so the herb inhibition to spike protein is attributed to the star shaped structure. Okay, a glycosyl core with a number of galloyal fingers. The fingers are capable of forming an antibody-like tertiary structure, which can simultaneously grip two separate spike proteins through their RBD's neutralized divergent influenza and form stable uh, herb spike protein complexes. However, without that structure of gallic acid, the galloyal finger can only be self-docked into the binding pocket but cannot grip. All right. Therefore, the star shaped structure feature is the key to the aggregating mechanism of this inhibition. Recent studies on protein PGG interaction also demonstrated that the binding involves both hydrophobic interactions and H bonds, meaning um, hydrophilic. Um, since PGG analogs consist of two simple chem oils, glycosyl and galloyl, it is expected that new HA inhibitors can be in, uh, identified from the star-shaped compound library symbol from glycosyl-like and galloyl-like chemomils. And I know y'all like, damn, KT, what the hell are we talking about right now, bro? All right, so in so many words, what I just read to you, they're saying that this PGG, which is a secondary plant metabolite, Fancy word for saying active component in herbs, phenols, right? Um, if I can find a um, molecular structure of it. Well, it's on the page right here. If you look at the left square, the orange and the yellow um, geometrical shape, that's the PGG, all right? And the HA or what we would say the spike protein, they're saying HA here because they're talking about the proteins that sit on the, the, the envelope of the influenza virus, but we're using this in regards to the corona. So not to confuse you, when you see HA, just think of the spike proteins from the corona. All right. Now, the uh, the the bottom right screen where the arrow is pointing to the right it says it for you. It says virus one envelope. It says virus two envelope. So these, these herb, these active herb molecules, these carbon based molecules, specifically this PGG, has a star shaped structure where little fingers extend from them. And what they're able to do is bind with the proteins extending from the envelopes of the virus. So when you look at the square that says D, where the arrow's pointing up, you got viruses on the left that are separate. Just imagine all these viruses got into your cell and they up in there and they doing all this crazy junk, right, on their own. Well, the molecule from the herb has the ability to remember the, um, the catch mitt game where you got the little Velcro mitt and the ball and you throw it and it, and it sticks right? 
these molecules is like Velcro. This is just so you can get it. They're like Velcro to these viruses. So they stick the one virus, right? And once you stick the one virus, another virus come along and it's able to stick to that virus. And I got two viruses stuck together. Then another virus is coming and stick that virus. So now you got three viruses. So if you look at the at the picture, the blue square that says D, right? You see three separate viruses, but then you see an, an aggregate, all right, or a coming together of three viruses stuck together. Now, who cares about that? What that means is because these viruses are stuck together, they cannot operate. They can't do their functions. Their functionality is based on individualism. They based on them. The only way they can be powerful is alone. You know what I'm saying? You know how people want to get get folks separate from the from the from the crew, just like um wildebeest when they go through their migrations. They want the weak one separated from the pack so the lions can attack it. Same with the zebras. If the wildebeest is thundering through the damn valley, thundering through the second getty full speed ahead, man, they can't run up and take none of them. They got to wait till someone gets separated. So viruses are only strong when they separate. But these molecules is able to bring them together. So if you look at C and it says virus one envelope, virus two, the green and the blue represent those proteins that normally are able to get in the cell. But what happens is the molecules from the herb is able to bind to one and bind to another. And now they're like this. They can't. Ah, they're like crazy glue. You got me stuck, baby. I can't move. So how you think they're going to be able to bind to the ACE, the ACE2 receptor? They can't bind to the ACE2 receptor and get inside no more. Or if they inside... They can't utilize your 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 nucleus in order to um, um, replicate themselves so they could go to other parts of the body. You know, so this PGG is real serious. So this is based on gallic acid. This is based on the EC, the ECEG molecules. This is just based on um, uh, gallic acid based flavonoids, which you'll find in a lot of foods and in a lot of herbs. I might be giving y'all too much. I might be giving y'all too much. Oh, yeah. I might be giving y'all way too much. I think y'all done with me. I think y'all finished, man. Oh, what's that dot? I wanted to know that dot, them dots, the, the red dots in the, um, hold on. If I, uh, I know I can, um, hold on. Make it a little bit more. All right. So the red dots in the D square are the herb molecules and the virus is the peach pink color with the little blue um, proteins, you know, so it looks like the coronavirus, right? So those are the molecules and the molecules act like a Velcro, act like a glue that glue and aggregate and squeeze together all these viruses. Now, when they stuck like Chuck like that, guess who gets the signal guess who's able to roll up the white blood cells the macrophages they like word son you thought you was about to slide by me and get all up in the body bro i'm about to eat all y'all cats man pac-man pac-man tan them up like you ate one of them fruits that's what this molecule do it's like you ate one of them fruit. remember he wasn't eating steaks pac-man wasn't eating steaks and shit <laughs> Is every time you ate a fruit, right? You eat a fruit, these things end up turning blue, and your white blood cell, like Pat Man, come around and eat them up, and then they're able to boo boo out all of their little properties and stuff, you know. Man, let me tell you something. Somebody just asked me to speak on the vac on vaccinations. 
I've been on now for two hours. Um, you might have just came in, but I, you know, for a good hour I had up here, the sun is your vaccine. Um, I'm not going to spend my time talking about all the morbidity and crazy junk that's going to happen to your body if you take this vaccine. I'm not going to do that. Y'all should know uh, Bill Gates is the one that's pushing the virus. Come on, man. What? He's the same guy that provides the software for Dominion voting systems. Come on, bro. Like, I'm not wasting my time on that. I'm going to invest my energy in telling y'all what to do to make your immune system stronger because that's what you use to deal. People keep asking, what do I do for the coronavirus? What do I do for coronavirus? You got everything you need. Your immune system is what you would use to deal with that. But if you don't understand all of the options you have with your immune system, you're going to feel stuck like Chuck and you're going to fall under the needle. Mm -mm. No, nah, I ain't about to talk about that, man. Go on my, go on my Patreon become a member and look at my going viral series about five six videos each of them ranging from an hour and a half to four hours long slides animations charts all of that you know what i mean i talk about vaccines i, I get into all that stuff man so nah, 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 nah. nah he can't do a push-up you talking about 50 <laughs> he can't do one um Yeah. Oh yeah, and then let me let me uh give that uh solar happy solar return to um the late great Chadwick Bosman today his 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 solar return eleven eleven a high vibration of eleven 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 twenty nine he falls in that um in the uh the Aphiuchus um thirteenth sign uh dragon part of Sagittarius you know like uh Hendrix and Bruce Lee and all that. Um so yeah. Yeah, Bitcoin is on fire right now. Y'all might want to jump on that Bitcoin. That's get on it. Get on it, boy. It's it's time. It's time. Um <clears throat> All right. So so ionic botanicals uh, i don't know why i ain't put that up here yet i don't even be so ionic i think i'm gonna do lowercase so y'all can see it's an i and not an l so ionic botanicals dot a com Okay, dot com. See, I'm going to read uh, these squares to you, what's written on the bottom. PGG and in the A box, the box that's labeled A in the upper left corner with the red, the red outline, uh, PGG binds with two different trimers through hydrogen bonds and pi stacking interactions, all right? B, a pair of trimers are aggregated by a PGG molecule. The pair of trimers are further aggregated to form um, oligomers. Um, C, the HA polymers are formed from the PGG induced oligomers. D, the flu virus particles are aggregated by PGG. All right. That's that. And is this a bigger picture? Yeah, I think this is bigger. But yeah, you can see the molecule there. But yeah, man, this is another another mechanism that can be used. So I talked about the sun. I talked about vitamin D. Um, I, I spoke on um, the zinc um, uh, with the uh, flavonoids. Um, and I'm speaking on this, this PGG. Those are four remedies right there, bro. You know what I'm saying? That y'all could take the information on and... You know what I'm saying? You could go do your thing. You could you could research, you know. Yeah, man. Black Panther Wakanda forever, man. 
Ah, uh, he said Bill Gates can't even make a computer that could fight a virus. No, see, that's that's the problem. Y'all thought that um that he he he's not no who you where you think the virus came from. That's why you got to upload a new one every year. He the one that created the virus. He started with the computer so he could learn how to make a virus for us. Like, come on now. Come on now. Yeah, he is. He's been making viruses. That's been his thing. This ain't nothing new. Oh, yeah. Loopy all. Let me see. Uh, do I have I write something on that? And these some herbs I got lupiol in there. Lupiol is a um, mechanism that works real well too. Uh, let me see. What do we got? Yeah, man. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of info, man. Oh, yeah, this is a good picture. This is the spike protein, this red, right? And this uh, peach and blue on the top represents the membrane of the virus, that envelope, right? And then this blue is the ACE2 receptor on the surface of your cell. So this is the connection. So what you want to do is you want to take things that are going to inhibit that connection from taking place, something that's going to come between the two of them. One of the things that come in between the two of them, you know, I can't do all this without, without, without showing you my man's bro. The, the late great, where you at? Where you hiding at? Shout it. One second, one second, one second. Oh man, yeah, I need to bring that up too. <clears throat> Boom. All right, he looked familiar, right? That's another individual whose birthday we just experienced. That's right, babies in the vaccines, bro. We, uh, they wild, they wild. All right, so what I got on the screen is, um, or who I have on the screen, right? <laughs> Not what I got on the screen, but who I have on the screen. Let me... Alfredo Bowman, AKA Dr. Sabi, AKA Fred, AKA Baba Sabi. Oh, yeah. I'll talk about 5G next. I'll go into that next. Where we at? We at two and a half. This is this. We going in. I guess I'm just going to let it roll. Y'all rocking with me. So I, I'll keep going for a little bit longer. All right. So. The spike proteins. As well as the. Um, surface of our cells. Um, you will find a number of polymers that make them up. A polymer is a chain of molecules, all right? So one of them would be one, one little unit would be their own little thing. And then when you put three or more together, you get a chain link, okay? So what you're looking at right here, um, you see this gray circle, orange circle, gray circle, orange circle, and then you see a little line pointing to those chemicals at the top. They're just letting you know that those chemicals represent this, this chain right here. The chain is just a very simple um, uh, representation of the intricate chair-shaped molecule that you see above, which is 
galactose molecules and uh, and sulfates attached. All right. And and these are the same molecules that you find in the same in the same formation in CMOS, in Chondrus crispus, the Chondrus crispus uh, uh, um, cell structure um, are composed of the same polymer units, the same polymer units. So what you can do is through the consumption of the sea vegetables, the red algae, such as uh, Chondrus crispus and dulse, you know, and bladderax and stuff, what you're going to do is those polymers are going to get in between. They're going to get in between the spike protein and that ACE2 so that it can't connect. And since it has to connect so it can get in. You ever broke a key in a lock before? You stuck like Chuck, ain't you? So that's what taking CMOS is like. Taking CMOS is like you broke the key in the ACE2 receptor lock. So now the virus can't bind with it no more and get inside. That's another remedy, bro. Come on, man. Come on, man. What? What? That's another one. That's another one. I don't know how many I done did so far. You know what I mean? So we got mechanisms before the virus even comes in. You want the immune system on point. Somebody just asked about 5G, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with the 5G info. I'm going to close with the 5G. Where that slide at? Where that slide at? Where that slide at? Let me find that slide. Oh, yeah, look at this one. Flu vaccine increases coronavirus risk 36%, says military study. Huh? Huh? That's a military study now. Huh? 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 All right. This is the one right here. All right. So two things. Millimeter waves, 5G has a very broad spectrum between, I believe, uh, like 30 gigs all the way up to like 300 gigs. And they're able to use whatever little windows in that bandwidth um for all the devices you know so in particular when we're talking about 60 gigahertz that's the frequency of the absorption properties of oxygen meaning when you're utilizing a 60 gigahertz frequency you're going to suffer from extreme hypoxia hypoxia is suffocation that is essentially what coronavirus is doing to everyone or what COVID-19 is, it's a fancy way of saying, nigga, you got hypoxia. I mean, you suffocate and you ain't getting no oxygen. You breathe in, but the oxygen is not getting transferred by, by your red blood cells. It's not getting to the mitochondria. So the mitochondria can do its work in the cell, make ATP, structure, wood, and everything else it do. So you start dealing with oil failure and septis, and either it's going to be chronic morbidity, meaning you're staying sick and just getting worse and worse, worse, or it's a fatal situation. So it's really you breaking down. But the 60 gigahertz prevents the oxygen molecule from being able to bind to the heme in the hemoglobin. Whew, that's just some cold-blooded junk, ain't it? And on top of that, we have the uh, frequency being able to do what? Affect your skin and your sympathetic nervous system. How does it get to your sympathetic nervous system? It affects your sympathetic nervous system through your sweat glands because your sweat glands is directly connected to your sympathetic nervous system. Let me tell you how. You have a somatic nervous system. You have an autonomic nervous system. Your somatic nervous system represents the voluntary nervous system, the nervous system where I'm able to do this because I'm thinking about it and I'm telling my hands to do it, right? You know, I want to do the snake, you know what I'm saying? That That's all voluntary. That's all voluntary. But my breathing and my heartbeat, you know what I'm saying? Those things are involuntary. So the somatic part, right, is the voluntary while the autonomic is the 
involuntary. Now, when I go over to the involuntary, it's broken up into two parts, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. You don't want to do both. You don't want to be fighting and eating a meal. You don't want to be running and eating a meal. You don't want to eat and run. That is death. Like, I don't know why people say that. So, but I guess because they say and, right? So you eat, then you run later. But you want to let your food digest. So you chill, you relax, you, you sit, and you let that process happen. That's why eating deals with sitting down across the table from family, being around friends, because you want to be in a joyful mood. Ah, I was, oh, man, you crazy. It's, it's all them good hormones going on and everything like that. You chilling, you engaging mentally, but you're not doing any physical work. Fight or flight, though, physical work. Okay. Jake Paul and Nate Robinson, that that that's fight or flight right there. You know what I'm saying? Like one, one fought and one ran. You know what I'm saying? There's no eating in the ring because if you're eating, all the blood has to be in your digestive system, which means you're going to lose blood in your arms and your legs. You're not going to run fast or you're not going to throw a strong enough punch. But if you don't eat, then all the blood will be in your extremities and you can run fast or you can fight. Well, the when you get nervous, when you when you experience fear, when you scared, don't you don't your heart start beating? Don't you <gasps> breathing get shallow? Don't you start to sweat? When that teacher called you up in front of the class to do that math problem and you know you ain't was paying attention, don't you sweat? Huh? Come on, man. When you was about to get your ass beat by your mama or your daddy when you was little, did you was you not sweating bullets? Huh? Come on now. So the nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system is directly connected to your sweat glands and your sweat glands are directly affected by the millimeter waves and the 5G frequencies of the phone. That's how it gets in by way of that. Do you see this blue solenoid coil on your screen right now? That is not a synthetic object right there. That is your sweat gland. That is your pore, your sweat pore. You, the pore is just a circle at the top. But when you follow the sweat gland, it is a coil. It's a solenoid and it is filled with saline solution. What is that? That's salt water. You go on YouTube right now and type in saline flame, salt water, fire. Salt water can be combustible. You can make fire from that junk, bro. So what happens is the frequencies hits that salt water. You get heated up. All that heat starts disturbing all types of things underneath the skin. And that signal gets propagated by this antenna. Your sweat glands are antenna for 5G. That's how. One of many, there's a lot more, but that's one of them. Oh, let me um take the, uh, what's the name off? So if you look at the bottom, the middle, the, the, the top part is your epidermis. Then you have the middle epidermis and the inner epidermis. And you can see how the sweat gland is the thing that is able to do what? It connects the deep vascular tissue that they say don't get affected by these frequencies. The sweat gland connects the surface of your skin to the depths of your vascular network inside your body. It gets in through the sweat gland. Sweat gland, bro. So you could literally be like, yo, why are you sweating me, son? Get up off me, son. Why are you sweating me? Like they literally sweating. Sweating us out here, man. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so to make a long story short, um, the paper that I that I put up earlier that I started all of this with, let me um
was um, serum vitamin D levels on hospital admission associated with COVID-19 stage and mortality. This is a very recent paper. Like it just dropped a few days ago. So this is this is like the latest info. We're talking about all year worth of research. And um, the oh my goodness, and the um, the conclusion. Our study shows an association between vitamin D deficiency on admission and mortality of COVID nineteen pneumonia, independent of vitamin D impacted comorbidities such as chronic lung disease, coronary artery disease, and diabetes. It highlights the needs for RCTs targeting specifically vitamin D deficient patients at intake and makes a call for general avoidance of vitamin D deficiency as a safe and expensive possible mitigation of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. RCT stands for random control trials. So a safe and inexpensive huh? mitigation, meaning a, 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 a safe and inexpensive way to deal with this COVID, COVID trash that's going on right now. Um, last thing that I'm going to do. Yeah, man. So ionicbotanicals.com um, as well as um, this is Wuhan. What's the other one? Uh, oh, yeah. He might have it in here. That is where you're going to find. Oh, here we go. Uh, all right. Y'all still rocking. All right. So these are these are these slides right here show. Um, exactly how intricate the vitamin D situation is. Because what vitamin D does is once it enters inside your system, um, you're going to have the need to express more vitamin D receptors or satellite dishes specifically designed for vitamin D. So as your son makes more, you take more, you have more mechanisms to get it in the cell. So when it gets in the cell, it combines with another structure and it relocates into the nucleus and it forces the nucleus to uh, or the, the, the to 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 allow it to connect to certain genes. All right. And these genes are just areas of DNA where it has the information to make certain things that can be used, signals, whatever, to um, um, let the the immune system, the cells of the immune system know. Um, that we need to fight or we need to deal with certain things. In addition, another thing is going to make is more vitamin D receptors that will relocate to the membrane of the cell so that more vitamin D can, can connect. You know, And remember, another use for vitamin D is the fact that it helps with the whole um, usage transport of calcium, bro. And calcium is the main way that you stay electric. You know, it's it deals with your pH. It's how you contract your muscles. It's man, it's calcium is everything. Calcite is why your pineal gland works. It, it doesn't calcify based on calcium. It calcifies based on fluoride. So here it says vitamin D and induction of antimicrobial peptides against viral infection. Vitamin D induced antimicrobial peptides via VDR and RXR dimerization act against viral infections through one binding right to these mechanisms for recruiting immune cells to the site of infection Two activation of innate immunity by trans activation of EGFR three clearance of viral infection through mit mitochondrial membrane depolarization and release of cytochrome C four down regulation of cell entry replication and viral release five protection of viral rnas from degradation and induced immunity response to tlr's activation six direct effects on virions come on man and it even has the um the the act the acronyms um the abbreviations uh at the bottom you know so when i said egfr that's epidermal growth factor receptor you know so forth and so on everything's at the bottom of the screen but the chart shows the intricate details of how the vitamin d works you just have to follow the numbers look at number one you know 
and then go down to what was read. You know, look at number two and then go down what was read and, and, and so forth and so on. He said, I'm dropping yoga fire. Y'all don't see my man is up there. I'm about to bring him up since you brought him up. He going to say bye with me. I remember this one cat. I was reading one of the comments on one of the shows I did. And he was like, I'm going to take this cat seriously. We got a baby Yoda sitting behind him. Man, these cats think they smart. Because <laughs> I'm human, bro. I am human. I am human. Tear the club up. Yeah, yeah. Say what's up to the people, my man. Yeah, this is a director's chair that Larie got me. This is one of the things she got me for my birthday. I didn't even give y'all a tour of my new office space and everything. She hooked me up. But yeah, man, this is my KT Arts degree director's chair. Whenever I got to do work and everything, bro, I get the, it's going to go to my fro, straight to my fro. But yeah. I'm gonna throw Yoda up in the mix on the way out. And he's he ain't even Yoda. He's uh what's his name? Gro Grogor. I think they finally Grogu. That's it. I was about to say Grogor. Grogu. That's his that's his name, son. You know, I have a theory that you know, homegirl uh that um Rosario Dawson just played, you know, she 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 decided she ain't gonna train him so. He got to keep on going on a journey and find another trainer. I think when Grogu puts his hands up in the force and a Jedi show up, something tell me, bro. I think it's gonna be Mace Windu. I think they, I think they gonna fuck us up with that one, bro. I think he, I think Mace gonna come out out of nowhere because we never seen him actually die. And remember, him and Yoda had a good like relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, so. I wouldn't be surprised if he pop up, you know, but that that's just some some side, some side stuff right there. OK, so that's that slide. Let me go to this one. All right. Vitamin D and immunoregulatory function, the immunoregulatory functions of vitamin D. These are my closing remarks, by the way, y'all. This is what I'm going to leave y'all with. This is the creme de la creme for those that stuck around. Y'all about to get the real. Um, the immunoregulatory functions of vitamin D and viral infections include one, increase in virus specific CD8 plus T cells, all right, EPV and influenza, two, inhibition of beta of B cells, differentiation to plasma cells, and class switch memory B cells. Three, compromising the function of interleukin 10 producing regulatory cells. Four, reducing levels of antibody against viruses available in immune cells. OK, uh, five, inducing uh, cathelicidin at the site of infection or injury and therefore synergizing with vitamin D through upregulation of CYP27B1 by local conversion of more circulating vitamin D to its active form. Respiratory viruses. OK, that's the RS. I mean, the R uh, and V is in SARS. OK, severe, uh, severe acute right? Respiratory syndrome. Six, induction of CXCL10 and IFNB beta in airway epithelium. Seven, decreased viral replication. Eight, imbalancing inflammatory processes and oxidative stress. Nine, recovery of CD4 and T cells. Ten, facilitating host resistance against viral entry and viral replication. Eleven, recruitment of immune cells to the site of infection. 12, alteration of infection phase and in latently infected cells. Boom. That's the whole little boy right there. That's how vitamin D helps. It's a visual, a visual, a visual. <laughs> Not I am makes Windu, though. All right, so let me go on to the next one. All right, vitamin D interaction with cellular and viral factors. Just look at this world, man. Look at all the shit that be popping. Keep in mind that this is a cutaway of the cell, okay? The top is the phospholipid bilayer entry into the cell, all right? That's the nucleus you're looking at. But this ain't even the whole cell you're looking at. This is most of the cell. And we talking about having hundreds of 
of trillions of cells, bro. You know what I'm saying? All right. So interaction between certain regulatory factors is a potential mechanism for influence of vitamin D on virus infections, such as one acting as a co-activator specific for ligand induced trans activation of VDR that cross that crosstalk between vitamin D and tumor growth factor beta signaling pathways. Inhibitory effect via integrating into the vitamin D stimulated nuclear protein complex. Three, inhibition of vitamin D induced apoptosis. Four, overlapping with VDR binding sites. Five, vitamin D reduced immunopathology of viral infections, probably by inducing inflammatory inhibitors. Um, and preventing its translocation into the nucleus and subsequent binding to DNA promoter regions and and PSTAT1. <laughs> Six, uh, inducing CYP27B1 activity, vitamin D decreased viral proteins. Eight, um, and activated or of viral replications. And then they got all of the abbreviations at the bottom. All right. Oh, my goodness. It's more. Okay. Autophagy, apoptosis, and epigenetic and viral infections in vitamin D. Vitamin D can directly or indirectly downregulate viral infections. Here we go. One, promoting autophagy related components. Two, downregulation of autophagy inhibitors. Three, indirectly inducing autophagy. Four, inducing apoptosis related factors which can also be inhibited by viral infections. Imp uh, epigenetic elements and genetic polymorphisms are also involved in the complex transaction of vitamin D with viral infections. What is apoptosis? Program cell death. You can just let it go. You can hit, you know how you see all the movies and, and the bad guy like, you, you got me? Like, nah, bro, I ain't about to go down like that. And they hit the self-destruct sequence and cats got like 3.8 seconds to get up out of there. That's what your cells do. So you got a bunch of viruses in there. Your cell has the ability to perform apoptosis and let that shit blue. And all the viruses are going to blow with it. Autophagy is a process where you eat cell components, your, your macrophages, auto eating. Phagy means to eat. So you can eat them viruses up and then you defecate all these parts and recycle that junk. All right. Um, and epigenetics just deals with being above the genetics, being able to use environmental factors and stimulating factors and other things in order to change your DNA, change things, you know, so you're not suffering from the same thing. Like we are able to adapt. All right. All right. Last one. All right. This is actually figure one, what I was supposed to start with. The metabolism of vitamin D and its effect on non- immune and immune cells. Vitamin D is obtained primarily from food. Nevertheless, sunlight exposure in the skin with a UV rays alter 7-dehydroxycholesterol, the pre-vitamin D3, which is the main source of vitamin D3, um, pre-converts, pre-vitamin D3 finally is converted into vitamin D3 by heat. By what? By heat. By heat. What? All untamed all obtained vitamin D is localized to the liver, in the liver, right? 25 hydroxylase converts vitamin D3 to vitamin or rather to 25 OHD, right? 25 OHD is transported to the kidneys for conversion to 125-OH2D or uh, uh, calcitriol by the action of CYP27B1, right? Vitamin D3 um, is inactivated and oh no vitamin d3 is inactivated and converted to that form by that then it binds to vdr on target cells vdr is expressed in various cell jargon such as intestines bones kidney skin parathyroid heart muscle eyes brains pancreatic beta cells epithelial cells and also cells of the immune system look at all the places it's found on one hand, vitamin D alters some metabolic functions and tissue functions. On the other hand, binding of the metabolites of vitamin D to VDR leads to VDR and RXR heterodimer formation. Consequently, 
Binding of this diamond to promote the reasons of VDREs induces and or represses transcription of many genes. Expression of VDRs in almost all immune cells indicates that these are one of the main targets of vitamin D and numerous immune biomarkers are modulated via VDR actions. Given the fact that immune cells also express CYP27B1, it can, lo it can locally facilitate the conversion from the inactive to the active form. All right. And then it has a little chart underneath that lets you know what everything stands for. So, yeah, I read through it so you can hear it, but the chart's up so y'all can read it and look at it and body this information. Come on, bro. How many people are being extremely thorough in giving you straight information on your immune system and its properties and what you're capable of doing? I need y'all to know thyself. I need y'all to have more confidence. I need y'all to 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 body this, you know, embody this. You know what I'm saying? Because you can. Um, you don't have to fall for the okie doke out here, you know, and that's all it is. The okie doke is for those that are vulnerable to getting okie doke. You know, if you want to be sharp with it, the information is out here. Don't believe shit I said. All this is pseudo nonsense, right? Just take it though and go verify if it's pseudo nonsense. And then you might find out that it's not. You might find out that it's actually actual and factual. And it'll be exactly the information that you need. You know what I'm saying? So um, more information. Like I said, I can go another two hours, another three hours. I can go to two in the morning with this. Like we can keep going. I got damn near 300 slides amongst five uh, uh, slideshows of, of all of this. You know what I mean? So it's cool though. I think, I think that this was very in depth, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, I think it was digestible. I think we had a good time as well. Um, once again, so ionicbotanicals.com, baby. Show addict botanicals.com. Grogu said, Gone and gone to sat, gone to chat. Oh, <laughs> I be moving too slow. So ionic botanicals dot com, ionic botanicals dot com. Uh, and then. That is the cash app since folks request it. Um, if you want to drop anything in there for the info, if you don't, hey man, I'll just take a like, I'll just take a share of the video, share it with somebody you love so you can help help somebody. Um, I appreciate the bill. I'm glad y'all all y'all all showed up, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all up in the building, y'all taking it in. I got more information, but I think this is good for right now. New products are about to drop and they are going to knock you off your feet. I'm going to come back on and I'm going to actually have some images of the new products and kind of break down what they are and what they do. Teresa, what's up, girl? I appreciate you too. Um, Just share with your family, share with your loved ones. Um, if they don't believe you, they could like just vet it, man. Look it up and see what it is. Um, greenleaf herbs.com is mama pill site. Please support, you know. Um, big shout out to my queen, Laree. Love my baby, you know. Um, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be in front of y'all styling and profiling like this. You know, she got me this shirt, you know what I'm saying? Because we got some chemistry. I'm just saying. Um and just everybody that 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 supports, man, I, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, Cyber Monday, that's what I'm saying. We're about to debut new products. That's pretty much what it's going to be. But we're probably going to do a sale first. And I think we're probably going to debut all the products in the evening. Um, it's probably going to be tomorrow night when everything drops, all the new stuff. Um, but there'll be a sale up until that point. Um. So this is it right here. 
vitamin D3, Sotriol D, vegan source, not bacteria, no, plant-based. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I'm going to put this uh, slide back up because this is the one that really got the info on here. Um, I, uh, I'm just thankful, man. I'm thankful that y'all are here to hear me out because I'll be having all this information and just be about to explode sometime. <laughs> I get to share it with you, you know. Um, oh, yeah, Tuesday, of course, Tuesday on my Patreon is where I'm going to be breaking down the practical applications of how they built the Great Pyramid with animations, graphs, pictures, and everything. Not only that. But I'm going to show you in real time how to make a pyramid stone. Do you want to know how to make a pyramid stone? Have you ever, like, forget making the whole pyramid. You see them goddamn blocks. Would you like to have the knowledge of being able to make the pyramid stone yourself? That's what I'm going to be showing you amongst more information. Guaranteed, bro. Um, so that'll be on Tuesday on Patreon. That's December 1st. Um, I'm probably going to get down. It's going to be around 9, 30, 10, though. Like, it's going to be in the evening. But even if you don't make it at that time, it'll be recorded and it'll be available, you know, the next day. But the good thing about the lives is, is it's interactive. And other than the chat, you're able to ask me direct questions and I can, you know, interact with you and everything. I could bring in guests and stuff like that also. Um, so it's 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 real, it's real involved. So I, I suggest y'all check it out. Um, that'll be on Tuesday. You go to Patreon, I have the flyer up with all the information and details there. Um, but yeah, that's that. And um Wakanda Forever, Long Live Chat with Bosman. Um, happy solar return to Baba Dr. Sabi, which was three days ago on the 26th. Special shout out to my daughter, whose birthday was um, two days ago, um, the 27th. Love you, baby. She big girl now. She 10. She done hit her double digits. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Soak this information up. It's there for you. I hope y'all appreciate it. I'll see y'all soon. Peace.